What's up y'all, welcome back to Fish the Moment. Recently, I've been doing a lot of one-on-one -on -one virtual fishing lessons that I offer on my website, fishthemoment.com. And during these lessons, I help guys find offshore areas on their home lake. I also help them figure out strategies to transition from being a bank beater to an offshore angler. And for a lot of guys, it's really hard to make the transition from fishing visible cover down the bank like flipping boat docks, shallow grass, or laydowns, to fishing offshore in the middle of the lake where you can't see anything and you have to rely on your electronics to find offshore cover and fish. But over the last few weeks, I found a really easy way to explain the similarities between fishing down the bank and fishing offshore. It's helped a lot of the guys I give lessons to make that transition from being a bank beater to an offshore angler. And so in this video, I wanna help you change your perspective on offshore fishing to give you more confidence to go out in the middle of the lake and fish offshore this summer and hopefully put a lot more big bass in the boat. So let's get into it. What's up guys? So I just finished editing this video and I realized that a lot of the content in the first half of this video is gonna be very basic for the advanced bass fishermen watching this content. And so if you do find the content is a little bit basic in the first half of the video, just bear with me. I'm trying to make sure that everyone can stay on the same page throughout the video. So some of it may be very rudimentary for some of you guys, but don't worry, by the end of the video, you're going to learn some new things for sure and it's definitely going to be worth the weight so just strap in grab some popcorn watch the rest of this video and I guarantee you your perspective on offshore bass fishing is going to change by the end of this video so let's get into it before we get started i want to clear up some terminology that guys in my comment section and in messages to me are getting confused and that's the difference between fishing down the bank and fishing offshore and a lot of guys will use a lot of terms to describe fishing down the bank and fishing offshore. They may say that I'm fishing shallow water or I'm going shallow fishing today. Or they may say I'm going deep fishing, I'm fishing deep today. And these are all terms that get really confused and so I wanna make sure that you guys know exactly what I'm talking about when I use all these terms. So in general, when I'm talking about fishing down the bank, it does not mean that I'm standing on the bank actually bank fishing where my feet are on solid ground casting out into the middle of the lake. It means that I'm in my boat and I'm casting at the shoreline from my boat. And this is what I call fishing down the bank. And so if I'm gonna say that I'm in my boat and I'm gonna go hit the bank today, it means that my boat is in the water and I'm casting at the shoreline. And so this to me is also synonymous with shallow water fishing. And a lot of guys will call this shallow water fishing. But a lot of times it doesn't mean they're actually fishing shallow water. You can sometimes fish in 15 to 20 feet of water while your boat is right on the bank. And so for this video, I'm gonna use the term bank fishing to mean that I'm fishing from my boat within a cast length or less of the bank. That means that I can make a full length cast and hit the bank. And so that's what I consider bank fishing. And the other term I'm going to use in this video is offshore fishing. And a lot of guys get offshore fishing confused with deep fishing or fishing deep water. And a lot of guys think that when you fish offshore, you have to be fishing in deep water. And so one of the biggest mistakes I see guys make when they start fishing offshore is that they immediately go to the deepest water they can find in their lake, whether that's 50 feet of water, 80 feet of water, 20 feet of water. And they'll start fishing out there super, super deep. And they think, oh man, I'm not catching any fish. The fish must not be offshore. But actually, a lot of times when I'm fishing offshore, I'm not fishing in deep water. And deep water in general is a relative term anyways, and so it's really hard to classify what deep water is because it changes lake to lake. And so when I'm thinking about fishing offshore, I really mean that I'm fishing more than one cast length away from the bank. So I make a full cast off my boat, I'm not going to hit the bank. And a lot of times when I'm fishing offshore, I may only be in one to three feet of water, but I might be 50 to 100 yards away from the bank. And so, again, deep fishing is kind of a misnomer for offshore fishing because I can fish offshore in a foot of water, and as long as I'm away from the bank, I'm still fishing offshore. And so I really want to make sure that's clear because it gets a lot of new offshore fishermen in trouble. And so if you're not sure how deep you need to be fishing offshore on your home lake, check out this video I just made. It will give you guidelines on how deep to look offshore on your lake depending on the water clarity and the time of year. 
and a lot of guys get confused again because they think offshore fishing and deep fishing are the same thing, but they're definitely not. Offshore fishing is when you're fishing more than one cast length away from the bank, regardless of the depth of water, and fishing down the bank is when you're fishing within a cast length of the bank, again, regardless of the depth of water. So now that we have the basic terminology out of the way, we can start talking about why fishing down the bank and fishing offshore are basically the exact same thing if you change the way you start thinking about these two types of fishing. So here we have Grand Lake in Oklahoma and this creek has a good mixture of offshore structure and cover down the bank. And so most guys when they pull into this creek are going to start fishing down the bank and most of them will go to these shallow boat docks first and they'll start throwing spinner baits and jigs down these boat docks and they may fish let's say a hundred yards down this bank fishing every boat dock they find making two or three casts on every dock and this is very common and a way that a lot of guys catch fish on Grand Lake. And you probably find that when you fish down these stretches of boat docks, you may catch a fish off this first dock, then you'll fish for 30 to 40 yards, maybe catch another fish, then you'll fish maybe 100 yards, then catch two fish off of one dock. And a lot of times you can pattern these specific docks you're catching fish on by noticing that they're on points or on a steeper bank or there's a brush pile around those docks. But sometimes it can seem just kind of random and the only way you can figure out how to catch more fish is just to fish more docks and cover more and more water to put more fish in the boat. And this same mentality applies when you're fishing pretty much any type of cover on the bank, whether that's a lay down log, grass, rocks, or really anything. And when you're fishing down the bank, you may make two or three casts per boat dock. You're not going to make 15 or 20 casts in each spot. You're just going to make a few casts on the outside of the dock, maybe a couple casts down the middle, a couple casts down the back of the dock, and move on. And so maybe five to 10 casts at most if you're really thorough at fishing these docks. And if you're fishing lay down logs or patches of grass, you may make even fewer casts on these spots. And basically what you're trying to do is just fish as many docks as possible to find an active bass that's sitting up underneath this dock or find a dock that has a group of bass underneath it. And this is very common sense to most bass fishermen and this is how a lot of guys fish. They just go down the bank, they fish as much water as they can and they're trying to play the odds that they're going to fish as many boat docks in a day as possible and hope that they can catch 5 to 10 bass throughout the day. So that's how most guys fish when they're fishing down the bank. But then a lot of guys also like to fish offshore in this creek. And if you're new to offshore fishing, you may see my videos and you'll see me talk about all the different types of structures that are offshore. You have points, you have creek channels, you have ditches, things like that. And you may go to the map, like this Navionics map here, and point out some good looking areas. And let's say we pull up on this point right here that looks really good. A lot of guys that start fishing offshore may graph over this point, they'll see some fish down there, maybe some bait fish, maybe even a brush pile, and they'll start fishing the spot. And one common mistake I see guys make when they're fishing offshore is they'll fish this point for 45 minutes straight. They'll sit there and they'll fish it and they'll fish it and they'll fish it. They'll try 12 different baits, they'll make a lot of different casts on the spot, and they'll say, man, I see fish down there, I know they're there, I'm gonna make as many casts as I need to to get those fish to bite. And this makes sense in the new offshore fisherman's mind because they see fish there, they know there's fish on that offshore spot, so if they throw enough baits to make enough casts, surely those fish are going to bite. But in my experience, I find that that does not work most of the time. And actually, I get most of my bites offshore within the first five to 10 casts of fishing the offshore spot. So you're probably wondering where is he going with all of this, and to wrap this all up, let's go back to these boat docks that are on the bank. So again, when most guys fish down these boat docks, they're going to make two to five casts per boat dock and move on. They're not going to sit and fish a boat dock for 30 or 40 minutes, but then when they go offshore and they find an offshore point or a brush pile or rock pile, and they see fish on it, they may fish it for 45 minutes straight. And to me that makes no sense because if you're going to fish an offshore brush pile that looks good on your graph for 45 minutes, why wouldn't you fish a shallow boat dock for 45 minutes as well? And when I say that, sometimes I'll click for guys and they're like, oh, that doesn't make sense. And the reason that a lot of guys do fish offshore structure longer than they do cover down the bank is that you're able to see the fish on your graph when you drive over a spot offshore. 
But one thing that guys don't understand is that bass have very specific feeding windows offshore. And they basically feed like we do, where they have a breakfast, a lunch, and a dinner time. And so on some offshore areas or some areas down the bank, the bass may feed from 8 a.m. to 9 a.m., 11 a.m. to noon, and then 5 to 6 p.m. And just to be clear, these feeding windows can change day to day based on a lot of different factors, whether that's the amount of current you have going through your lake, the weather conditions, the amount of boat traffic you have on the lake, all kinds of factors can change when these bass feed. But what I found is that throughout a given day, those bass are always going to feed at least a couple times. And so even if the feeding windows change day to day, you can normally find at least two to three hours throughout your given fishing day when those bass are biting. And so what a lot of guys don't realize is that when they're fishing down the bank, they're probably fishing by a lot of fish that don't actually bite their lure. And I think a lot of guys think that if they are fishing down the bank and they're throwing a spinner bait, every fish that is on that bank is going to bite their lure. But that's definitely not the case. And if you fish down a row of boat docks, you might fish past 10 boat docks with fish on it until you actually catch a fish because all of those fish on those other boat docks weren't actively feeding at that time and the place you caught your fish on was a place where the fish were feeding and you hit the timing right. And this is the exact same thing that happens offshore. And so one way you could approach fishing offshore is to just pick a specific depth range you want to fish, let's say 15 feet. And then you can find that 15 foot contour line on your Navionics map and follow that contour line all the way through this creek, casting a jig and a crankbait. And just like when you're fishing down the bank, you can hope that you're going to put that bait in front of some fish at some point. And over the course of that time fishing, you'll probably run across some brush piles, some rock piles, things like that. And fishing this way offshore is the exact same way that most guys fish down the bank. And this is actually how I started fishing offshore before I had good electronics. But as I got better with my fish finder, I realized that I could eliminate a lot of water by just graphing around looking for fish and brush piles with my electronics, which is what a lot of good offshore fishermen do. And so instead of fishing down that 15 foot contour line with a jig or a crankbait like you'd fish down the bank, I actually graph more than I fish and look for the brush piles and the fish on my graph and then mark areas that look good and then come back and fish a very specific spot like a point, a ditch, or a specific brush pile rather than just fishing all of the 15 feet of water offshore in this entire creek. And this is where a lot of guys start having trouble when they start fishing offshore. They think of offshore areas as these magic areas where fish are going to school up and they're always going to feed every single time you throw a bait in there. And as long as you find an offshore area that has fish on it, you're always going to be able to get those fish to bite. But just like fishing down the bank where you may find a good dock that has fish on it, those fish might not be biting on that dock all day long. And while you may be able to pull up to that dock a couple times throughout the day and catch some fish, it's not like you can sit on that dock all day long and catch fish on it every single cast you throw in there. And so in my mind, a dock that's up on the bank is the exact same as a brush pile that's sitting offshore in 15 feet of water. It's just a piece of cover that bass can get around. And offshore, you will find bass grouped up a little bit tighter where you'll have 15 or 20 fish on an offshore spot, but you will also find docks on the bank that may have 15 or 20 fish around them. That's very common or a lay down log or a patch of grass. And so just because an area is offshore doesn't mean that it's this magic area where you could pull up at any time and catch fish to your heart's content if they're there. Those fish are going to feed at specific times just like they do up on the bank. And you have to fish for them in a similar way as you would when you're actually fishing down the bank. And so here is the point that I've been trying to get to now for about 10 minutes. And it's that when I'm fishing offshore, I'm not going to make 30 or 40 casts on an offshore area. Instead, I'm going to treat an offshore point, an offshore brush pile, or any type of offshore structure or cover, just like I would a piece of cover or a good bank that I can visibly see with my eyes. And so if I was fishing down a lay down on the bank or a good steep bluff wall, I might make 10 or 15 casts on that area max. And that's the same thing I do when I fish offshore. If I see a good brush pile or a good point, I'm gonna make 10 to 15 casts. If I don't get bit, then I'm gonna move on and I'm going to fish a new area. 
The only difference between fishing down the bank and fishing offshore is that I'm eliminating water with my fish finder rather than with my bait. And so when I'm fishing down the bank, I'm gonna be making a lot of casts and I'm going to fish all of the visible cover I can see because I can't graph over these shallow areas. And I'm using my bait to eliminate water or when I'm fishing offshore, I'm going to actually be able to see those fish and see the brush piles on my fish finder and I can eliminate all the dead water by looking for places that have no fish and then identifying the key places that do have fish using my electronics. And so once I have all those key spots identified offshore, all I have to do is pull up, make five to 10 casts on this offshore brush pile or an offshore road bed or an offshore point. If I don't get bit, I'm gonna move on and I'm going to fish the next spot to look good on my fish finder. Now I'm gonna repeat this process over and over again until I hit the timing right on these offshore areas. If you remember from earlier, these bass are not all going to feed at the exact same time whether you're up on the bank or you're fishing offshore. And so this offshore area right here may have a feeding window from 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. And then this next offshore area may have a feeding window from 11 a.m. to noon. And then this last offshore area may have a feeding window from 5 to 6 p.m. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to fish all of these offshore spots in a row and only make five to 10 casts per area, spending about 10 minutes per spot. And if I have eight spots like I do here, I can fish all eight of these spots in about an hour and a half to two hours. And if I start fishing offshore at 8 a.m. in the morning, I may only hit the timing right on one out of eight of these offshore spots. And so I may only catch fish on one of these areas. And then after I finish my rotation of these eight spots, it might be 10 o'clock. And so now I might start fishing all these spots again, hoping to hit the timing right. And I'll try to rotate these eight areas anywhere from three to four times throughout a fishing day and hope that three or four times throughout the day I hit the timing right and I'm able to catch fish. And remember, all these areas are places I picked out as high percentage areas because I either saw fish on my graph, I saw bait fish down on the graph, or a really good piece of cover. And I really like fishing this way offshore because it's a very systematic approach to catching fish. What you can do is graph for three or four hours, find some good areas, then rotate those same areas over and over again. And you're eliminating a lot of variability in when the fish are feeding, the conditions, all that stuff. And really, you're just hoping that you play the odds right to catch those fish. And so if we take a look at some of the math that might be behind this framework or this strategy, you might say that you find eight areas in a day. And if you fish those spots three times throughout the day, you're gonna fish 24 spots per day. And then let's say that your chances to hit the timing right on an offshore area is one out of every 12 spots you fish. This means that you're going to hit the timing right two times throughout your day if you fish 24 spots. And then let's say that you catch three fish per offshore area. That means you're gonna end up catching six fish total on a given fishing day. But then let's say the odds improve and instead of hitting the spot right one out of every 12 spots you fish, you hit the timing right one out of every five spots you fish, and you're still fishing the same 24 spots you fished earlier. Well, in this case, you're going to hit the timing right five times throughout the day, and if you catch three fish off of each of those spots again, that means you're gonna catch 15 fish offshore in a given fishing day. And so you can obviously adjust the numbers to go into this formula, and if you wanna to try to catch more fish, maybe you need to start increase the number of areas you're fishing per day. Or maybe you need to put yourself in more productive areas and try to determine which offshore areas give you the best shot of actually catching a fish or hitting the timing correct. Or you need to just refine what the timing is on a given fishing day. And all these things can increase the number of fish you catch offshore. And this is the way that a lot of the top pros catch a lot of good fish when they're actually out on the tour. They spend their three days of practice finding good offshore areas, they determine the best timing for each offshore area, and then they rotate the areas with the correct timing. And this takes a lot of practice, a lot of time on the water, and it's definitely not an easy task, but you can kind of figure it out even within a fishing day itself. And don't get discouraged if you're not going out and catching 100 fish offshore your first time. As you can see, there's a lot of complications that can go into it, but normally I can go out and catch anywhere from five to 10 fish on a given fishing day, even if I don't know anything about the lake, I don't know the timing, I don't have any areas found, but I can figure it out just by graphing and doing this odds 
method that I'm showing you right here to find fish. And I'm sure that this probably went over a few guys' heads, and that's fine. This is kind of how I think about bass fishing. I like to play the odds. I like to play the probability. As an economics major in college, this is the stuff that gets me really excited. But if you kind of start thinking about offshore fishing in this way and relate offshore fishing to fishing the bank, like I described earlier, offshore fishing becomes a lot less daunting and a lot less scary and it really just comes down to playing the odds and playing the probability and then implementing the system to eliminate as much unproductive water as possible. And so I hope this video helped change your perspective on how to fish offshore. And I know that this may not be the perfect solution for everyone and I'm not going to claim that this is a foolproof formula or a foolproof framework for catching fish offshore. But it is something that I've been working on for a while and it works really well for me and I find that I am consistently catching 5 to 10 bass offshore on almost every offshore trip when I implement this process. And so hopefully this was helpful to some guys out there and hopefully you'll be able to use this to put more fish in the boat this summer. And so if you enjoyed the video, please leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think. If you have a lot of questions about what I'm talking about, feel free to leave a comment down below. I'll try to get back to as many as I can. So thanks again for checking out this video and I'll see you all in the next one. Hey guys, thanks for checking out the video. Hope you enjoyed, and if you want more content from Fish the Moment, check out my website, fishthemoment.com. On my website, I offer virtual fishing lessons you can do from your home using Google Hangout, on the water fishing lessons where you can go out in your boat and I can show you how to find fish with your electronics and on the water, and also lake breakdowns of some of those popular lakes around the country where I'll give spot recommendations, conditions, and lure recommendations as well. And if you really enjoyed the video and you want to support the channel in a more personal way, donate on my Patreon page. On Patreon, you can give a small monthly donation that helps me continue to make quality content for you guys into the future. And last but not least, check out my social media pages. I'm on Facebook and Instagram, and I post a lot of great pictures, videos, and articles about bass fishing. So thanks again for checking out this video, and I'll see you in the next one.